In this video, we will look at the facts that experts are using to predict a worldwide famine and then see if by using hydroponics, the average person can help while also lowering their own food costs. I'm not an expert, but like many, I am sometimes skeptical of what politicians and experts try to tell me. I've done my best to gather the real facts to see what is true and what we can do to get us through these problems. So the question is, will there be world famine starting in 2022? Well, it seems most experts are predicting this, although most politicians and news agencies are not, or they're just not talking about it. Let's look just at the facts. Fertilizer has become an important role in the miracle increase of food production over the last 50 years. Just like fertilizer you buy at the store, there are three major elements that commercial growers use worldwide. NPK, or nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Potassium most commonly is in the form of potash. Most countries don't make enough of their own and need to import. China, for example, imports over half the potash it requires. Potash cost was around $250 a ton in 2020, but worldwide shortages starting last year have pushed the price to close to $900 a ton just this month. Canada is the largest exporter, followed by Russia, and the war has put a stop to all Russian and Belarus exports this will lead to even higher prices. However, the bigger problem will be that there's not enough potash available no matter the price, and global food production will not be enough to feed everyone. China announced this week that it'll start using its potash reserves. This is based on the Russian export ban. So just how bad is this? Potash for fertilizer, or potassium chloride, is mined. Canada produces about 32% of the world's supply, the next two countries are Belarus and Russia, both banning exports and representing a total of 38% of the global production. China is next at 10%, but as I said, they don't make enough for internal demand. Potash is an essential fertilizer for wheat, corn, and most vegetable crops. What about the other two fertilizers that are essential for farming? Well, there doesn't seem to be a shortage of phosphorus fertilizers, but they are at an all-time historical price high double the price from last year. This is probably due to high costs in fuel used in mining and transportation. More of a problem are the nitrate fertilizers. 75 to 90 percent of the cost of manufacturing is from natural gas. Just like all other oil-based fuel, natural gas is very expensive now. Nitrate fertilizers are also affected by Russia and Belarus export bans. On top of this, Russia is the number one exporter of nitrogen-based fertilizers. Here we can see nitrogen-based fertilizer inflation since 2020. Just like the other two, nitrogen-based fertilizers are expensive, and like phosphorus, there may just not be enough available. We saw some good news in May as ammonium nitrate price saw a little reduction, but that was because some South Asian farmers decided it was too expensive to buy and either closed down their farms or decided to try growing without fertilizer. It looks like the experts are right, and if things don't change drastically, we're headed towards famine. Hardest hit will be countries that don't have their own sources of fertilizers and poor countries that import food. So how can hydroponics help? Obviously, we don't yet have or may never have the technology to grow the major grain crops hydroponically. However, there are definite advantages to hydroponics. I compared commercial lettuce farms to my small hydroponic greenhouse, and by weight we used less than half the fertilizer per pound of lettuce compared to the California commercial farm. My fertilizer cost is more per pound of lettuce produced because they get much better prices due to their volumes. Here are the numbers for the commercial farm and my calculations. The information comes from a study done by the University of Davis in California for the year 2019. I verified my numbers by comparing with my friend over at Lettuce Haven. I think more experienced hydroponic growers may do better, so these are probably a little conservative. Energy cost to run my farm is about the same as a large commercial grower per pound of lettuce. I use electricity to run pumps, and the commercial growers use diesel to power tractors and other equipment. The real savings in local hydroponics is transportation cost and the fact I have no need to use pesticides and herbicides. Before we factor in these costs, 
let's first look at how much a local hydroponics farmer can grow in the space available. A commercial grower of iceberg lettuce produces about 0.75 pounds per harvest and 1.5 pounds a year per square foot. In my greenhouse, I grow year-round and get 11 pounds per square foot. At 68 calories per pound and 6.4 grams of protein per pound, my hydroponic greenhouse outproduces per square foot even soybeans, the densest farm-grown crop in both calories and protein. My point is not to say that in any way we can replace the large farm growers. However, with a small hydroponic system, you can have a guaranteed source of food for your family and a little bit to sell. Now let's look at a cost comparison. Here's a list of what either you don't pay for or is reduced by home growing food hydroponically. Long haul diesel fuel and transportation costs, cardboard packaging and refrigeration during storage and transportation, pesticides and herbicides cost, and don't forget the produce broker and the grocery store markup that you pay for. I took a survey of lettuce prices at three different stores here in the Philippines and then went online to get data as provided by the USDA for the United States. I have subscribers all over the world but I think that these are two pretty good extremes. Greenleaf lettuce sells for about $1.89 a pound in the US and is projected to increase around 8% in 2022 according to the USDA. Local greenleaf lettuce here in the Philippines sells for about $3.06 a pound. So yes, hydroponics can help us get through the tough times ahead. If you've just been thinking about it but put it off, now is the time to start. Place a system in your backyard or on your balcony. I recommend starting small if you're new to growing vegetables. There are plenty of websites and YouTube videos that can help. Thank you for listening. Take care and God bless.